Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the SmackDown Review. And this review is going to be on this past Tuesday's edition of SmackDown. Of course, uh, we are on the build for Super Showdown, which is next Friday. Uh, Super Showdown in Saudi Arabia. And this SmackDown this week, I thought this show sucked. Uh, I have to say it was better than Raw, but still, the show pretty much sucked, in my opinion. So, uh, let's get started uh, with the SmackDown review. So, SmackDown opened up on Tuesday with Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens came out, and he was saying that he was going to kick off SmackDown with a... KO show. And he says after him being there all day, he couldn't think of anything worse than being in Oklahoma, which the crowd booed at him. Uh, you know, he's saying, you know, not, you know, nothing is worse than being here in Oklahoma, giving a KO show to people who are not worthy of it. Owens goes on Went on to say that the only thing that makes being in front of the crowd bearable is that he's going to beat the hell out of Kofi Kingston. Because uh, this kicked off uh, with a rematch, uh, with a Money in the Bank rematch, Kofi Kingston versus Kevin Owens. So this all happened before uh, the match got on the way. So Owens says for the past few weeks, he's developed a taste for dishing out punishment onto members of the New Day. He says he has never he said he had nothing to do with him attacking Big E last week. He goes on to say that he is a good person and he would never do something like that. Owens says if New Day wants to blame him for anything, they can blame him for what he is responsible for. And they could blame him for the pain that he gave Xavier, and that they could blame him for Kofi's fairy tale ending at Super Showdown when Dolph Ziggler beats him for the WWE Championship. And he wanted to say that that will be a direct result on what he does to Kofi uh, tonight. And Owen says. Uh, to Dolph, he was calling out Dolph. He says when uh, Dolph beats Kofi, he doesn't have to thank him with a card or text. Now Dolph can thank him in person when Owens comes knocking at the door for the WWE title. Because uh, Owens says it all comes back to him because he is the show. So he gets interrupted by Kofi. Kofi came out and he ends up telling Kevin Owens to stop lying and that everyone knows that he attacked Biggie last week. And he goes on to talk about how uh, Owens lied to be a member of the New Day, you know, when Biggie was uh, out with the injury. And Kofi says to Owens that he's lying to himself when he said that Dolph is going to soften to soften him up at Super Showdown. Kofi says to Owens that he isn't going to soft he isn't going to soften him up for Dolph. And what's going to happen is that Kevin Owens will be paying. And that he's not going to stop from making Owens pay for re injuring Big E's knee. And for also attacking Xavier. And so uh, the match got on the way. Kevin Owens versus Kofi Kingston. This was a decent match. This was a good match uh, to kick off uh, SmackDown. Uh, it was back and forth uh, between the both of them. Uh, good wrestling from uh, both the guys. Kevin Owens uh, was impressive here. Uh, Kevin Owens, in my opinion, has the best frog splash uh, nowadays. 
and Kofi ended up winning. Uh, he ended up pinning the uh, the Trouble in Paradise to Kevin Owens. So Kofi ended up uh, win the match. Uh, this was non-title match. And I have to say, this match was better than uh, the match that they had at Money in the Bank. But all in all, uh, Kevin Owens versus Kofi Kingston in the rematch. Good match. Very decent match. Very enjoyable. Very enjoyable match. And then uh, we had uh, R-Truth and Carmella. Uh, they were backstage. R-Truth ends up telling Carmella, you know, it's been run, truth, run. Ever since he's won the European Championship, which he gets uh, confused, uh, you know, because it's the 24-7 Championship, not the, uh, not the uh, European Championship, which the European Championship has been retired for, uh, for years. And he says everyone has been chasing him at the mall, at picnics, at airports. And then we see Drake Maverick. Uh, he was hanging up uh, the wanted posters. If you uh, are around on social media, Drake Maverick has been uh, making these posters with R-Truth on it. These wanted posters uh, with R-Truth on it. Uh, because... Drake Maverick uh, really wants to win uh, that 24-7 uh, championship <laughs> for uh, for some odd reason. So, but this this was just pointless. You know, 24-7 championship. People, you know, saying that oh, this is good, this is funny. What is so what is so funny about it? You know, it's you know just them running. Uh, just to get our truth, a bunch of jobbers run to get our truth. So, if you think the twenty four seven championship is a good idea that WWE made, I don't know what's wrong with you. So then we had uh, Daniel Bryan uh, and Rowan. Uh, you know they came out. Kayla Braxton. Uh, she was in the ring. She was interviewing uh, the both of them. Daniel says to Kayla Braxton that the WWE tag team division is a joke. And you know what this means? This is WWE admitting that their tag team division is a joke. And it certainly is. It certainly is a fucking joke. Daniel says that uh, it's a joke that makes us cringe. And he says Rowan has a joke. So Rowan ended up telling a joke. It was a knock-knock joke. He goes, knock-knock. Caleb Braxton goes, who's there? Rowan went, the SmackDown tag team division. Caleb Braxton says, the SmackDown tag team division. Team Division who? And Rowan says, it's a joke. And then Daniel Bryan and uh, Rowan, they were laughing. It wasn't even funny. It was, it was just cringe. I didn't even laugh at it one bit. And uh, Daniel Bryan says, he and Rowan are not jokes. And they have ambition and purpose. He goes on to say, unlike all of these people who wasted their Memorial Day weekend, eating the beautiful creatures of this planet. You know, you're going on to say about hot dogs that were, uh, you know, that were from a hyper intelligent pig named Wiggles. And, you know, eating hamburgers from, that were from a, from a nutrient cow named Wilbur. He's like, all these beautiful creatures have names. But they but they do. He goes on to say the Oklahoma the people of Oklahoma are worse than anybody. He says Oklahoma is a leader is a leader in fracking. 
a leader in deep oil well drilling, which leads to earthquakes. And him and Rowan's mission, their mission statement, is to save the tag team division and save the planet. Because they are the planet's tag team champions. And so out came heavy machinery. Ostos, Vic, Tucker Knight. We haven't seen uh, these guys in a while. Can't remember the last time we saw Heavy Machinery. But they both ended up uh, they both ended up coming out. Tucker gets on the mic. He says, no doubt, the champs are a great tag team. And he says, as much as they love having fun, it's time to get down to serious business. And Otis adds that Business is the tag titles. And you know, they want to have a match. A referee ends up coming out. Dan O'Brien accepts Heavy Machinery's challenge. But they are not they weren't gonna have the match in Oklahoma. And so that's how the uh, the segment ended, but you know, it was a okay segment. I guess we're going to get that match uh, pretty much soon. Daniel Bryan and Rowan versus Heavy Machinery. That happens. We all know possibly Daniel Bryan and Rowan. They're going to retain. As much as I would like to see Heavy Machinery with the titles around them, because I think they that uh, they deserve it. They're a pretty entertaining tag team. They were one of my. They're one of my favorite tag teams. Then we had uh, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. They were backstage. Uh, they were passing out magazines of uh, Mandy on the cover of Muscle and Fitness, hers. Uh, the magazine uh, just came out. We see them, uh, we see both of them pass it to uh, Payne Royce and Billy Kay, the Iconics. They were passing it on to... Uh, you know, crew members, two crew members. And then we see Amber Moon. She was on a production crate. She was reading Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So Sonya Deville ends up uh, putting out a spoiler. She ends up telling Amber Moon that everyone dies in the book. And Mandy says to Amber to read her magazine. And both uh, her and Sonya Deville give uh, the rest of the magazines to uh, to Amber, which Amber end up uh, shooing them off of her. So that's what happened backstage. But it was cool that they have uh, Mandy Rose on the cover of, uh, of hers uh, by Muscle and Fitness. Then we have Mandy Rose versus Carmella. This was a shitty match. This was boring. Uh, Sonya Deville was on the outside. You know, she was just raising a uh, you know magazine of uh, Mandy up there. Uh, Carmella ended up getting distracted by Sonya, which led to Mandy uh, rolling up Carmella. Mandy Rose wins the match. Shitty match. Didn't care for it. Oh, and then. Then after that, I gotta play. Uh, I gotta play this now because uh, every time I mention the twenty four seven championship, I'm gonna be playing this because this describes the twenty four seven championship and these jobbers uh, running after uh, and challenging for the title. Yes, it's the Benny Hill theme. So. We had our truth who's run away from his uh, jobber challengers. And out came Jinder, Jinder Mahal. But uh, our truth ended up, ended up putting him into the wall and through a door. Our truth ended up coming into a uh, photo booth. And I just had to play that because 
You know, every time I talk about the 24-7 championship from now on, I'm going to be playing that theme. So, like I said, it describes it. So, R-Truth ended up hiding in a photo booth. Drake Maverick ended up coming. He was running. He ran into tr to Truth. The wanted posters go everywhere. And... He ends up uh, chasing uh, R-Truth from behind. So now it's pretty much basically it. This shit is not funny. Then we had uh, Alistair Black. Alistair Black. WWE hasn't made him compete in the ring since the shakeup. He hasn't been put in a match. Ever since the shakeup. So Alistair Black ends up cutting a promo. Uh, he says that he gets it. And that we're simply waiting for him to throw out a name. Pick a f and pick a fight with anybody. And he says he's sitting here waiting patiently for anybody to pick a fight with him. Just a little promo from Alistair Black. But hopefully we see him in the ring again. I said this guy hasn't competed in the ring uh, since you know after the uh, the shakeup. Come on, get Alistair Black in the ring again. Why keep why keep making him cut all these promos? Guy's talented. So then we had the Shane McMahon Appreciation Night. I'm like, they had to do this for SmackDown. We where we had. 40, like 40 minutes of Shane on Raw, cutting that uh, that segment, and beating uh, Roman's cousin Lance. I'm like they couldn't say they couldn't have saved this for Raw. They had to do it on SmackDown. So if seeing Shane McMahon on Raw for the, those 40 minutes uh, in the first hour wasn't bad, you got this. Once again with Shane. So we had Shane McMahon, Elias, and Drew McIntyre. Uh, they were out there for Shane for his appreciation night. We get, of course, Greg Hamilton. Uh, he gave his uh, best in the world intro to Shane. Shane ends up saying, you know, what is, when his good pal McIntyre came up with the plan for this ceremony, he wasn't sure. Because he doesn't consider himself a hero. Or someone who does what he does to win a trophy. Or be adored. He ends up saying. Uh, no. What he does is he enjoys his life. Being out in front of all of us. Goes on to say that he's just a humble man. He says he came back home to help run a family business. And the greatest adulation he could have is looking out at all of us in the crowd with smiles on our faces. And so we end up getting the video package of uh, detailing his story career. Uh, you know, from the Attitude Era, then, you know, winning the, uh, the Best in the World trophy at Crown Jewel, which we all want to fucking forget because that pay-per-view was so fucking shit. That was the worst pay-per-view of last year. That's that's the number one worst pay-per-view of last year, which was Crown Jewel. Number two was Backlash. So we had that. It was I'd say it was a good video package, you know, showcasing you know Shane's career from like the Attitude Era all the way up until now. And we had Shane putting over uh, the production crew. He was putting over Kevin Dunn, who was one of the, uh, the producers, which everybody booed at, which I was like, yes, thank you. Thank you, Oklahoma, for booing Kevin Dunn. Because Kevin Dunn deserves those fucking boos. This is the guy behind everything in WWE. He works alongside Vince McMahon. The one, he's along with Vince McMahon, that makes these shows completely 
lifeless. You know, especially with Monday Night Raw. But there you go, Vince McMahon, Kevin Dunn. Two guys that makes these shows like that makes these shows lifeless and unbearable half the times. Well, all the time for Raw. So Oh yeah, glad that the crowd booed fucking Kevin Dunn. And Shane's like, oh, there's no reason to boo. There's no reason to boo Kevin Dunn. I'm like, yes, there's a fucking reason to boo him. He says the video is meant to be educational for Roman. As if watching him beat down one of his family members on Raw wasn't enough. He says, in the end, Shane says in the end, he's going to beat some respect into Roman. And so Elias, or Elias, says he wrote Shane a song, which he ends up singing it. He's like, it's hieroglyphical. He also talks uh, shit to the Oklahoma crowd. And then we see, let's play it here. We have our truth jumps the rail. He gets chased by Drake Maverick. Then we have our troop kicks Drake Maverick, and then does a uh, power bomb. Our troop ends up winning, ends up retaining the twenty four seven championship. That's what happened. Pointless, fucking pointless. There, there you go. Benny Hill theme once again for the twenty four seven championship. It's got to keep going like that. So, after the match, Shane ends up saying to R-Truth, you know, I don't know where to go with this. He ends up kicking R-Truth, and we had a three-on-one. Shane, Shane, uh, Drew McIntyre, and Elias end up being down on R-Truth. Elias hits the drift away on uh, Truth. McIntyre ends up hitting the Claymore to uh, R-Truth. Then we had Elias ends up pinning our truth. So Elias ends up winning the 24 7 championship. And this is Elias's first title win in WWE, in his WWE career. Uh, did I give a shit? No. This guy is not even championship material, in my opinion. There you go. Elias wins his first ever championship in his WWE career. <laughs> but does that stick around? I'll get to that. <laughs> oh, man, this fucking title. This fucking ugly-ass jobber Ninja Turtle title. <laughs> it's a fucking joke. Then yet after the match, Shane says, you know, since R-Truth wanted to interject himself in his celebration, Shane had an idea. He ended up saying that Elias will team up with Drew McIntyre to wrestle what's ever left of R-Truth and Roman. So it was a tag team match. And Shane ends up saying to Elias, you know, not to worry because... He's suspending the 24-7 rules for the rest of the night to make sure that Elias can focus on the tag team match. So at the end of the match, anybody who wants to come out and uh, face Elias for the 24-7 championship, they could do that. So, and that was that. It, it, this, whole, this whole Shane McMahon appreciation night thing was... Did not care for it. It was fucking shit. And Elias won the 24-7 championship. <laughs> fucking joke. And I'll get to and I'll get to uh what happens later on. So then we had Kayla Braxton, she was interviewing Lacey Evans. 
Lacey was shown having a tea party with Charlotte. They both end up uh, talking about Becky Lynch and Bailey, And they call uh, both of them crass, classless, and arrogant. And she ends up saying they're, they're focused on sending Bailey back to the kiddie pool where she belongs. So that's what we saw at Lacey and uh, Charlotte uh, backstage. Then we have Bailey versus Lacey Evans. This was an okay uh, match. Not bad. We had Charlotte on commentary. And uh, there was a point in the match where uh, Charlotte you know, stood up while Bailey was down. Uh, towards the end of the match, Bailey ended up shoving uh, Charlotte. And, uh, you know, that led to, uh, Lacey, uh, taking, uh, advantage of the match. Uh, Lacey ended up, uh, rolling up on Bailey, but Bailey ended up, uh, rolling up on Lacey Evans. One, two, three. Bailey got the win. So Bailey got the win with the roll up. And then after the match, uh, you had Lacey. This is where it doesn't make this doesn't make any fucking sense. Lacey ends up being up Charlotte. And then Charlotte ends up beating down on Lacey. They both were going at it. And I'm like, what? This this doesn't make any fucking sense. You got a heel versus a heel. It doesn't make any fucking sense. When I saw that, I'm like, what the fuck? They're both heels. Doesn't make any fucking sense. So now, what, are we going to get Charlotte versus Lacey? Heel versus heel now? WWE. What the fuck are they doing? Then we had Sarah Schreiber. She was interviewing Andrade Cien Amis and Zelina Vega. Uh, he was being interviewed about his match against Balor at Super Showdown next Friday. Andrade goes on to say that he powerbombed Finn Balor. And before uh, Andrade talked, we had uh, Balor uh, you know, talking. Then after it was over, we cut to uh, Andrade. Cut back to Andrade. And Andrade says that, you know, he powerbombed Finn Balor off the ladder at Money in the Bank. And that if he wants, if Balor wants a match in Saudi Arabia, he'll need to find his inner demon after stepping up to him. So, this is pretty much confirmed that, you know, maybe the demon is going to be showing up. At Super Showdown. Then we had Roman Reigns and R-Truth versus Elias and Drew McIntyre. Tag team match. Shane was out there. You know, this was this was not bad, though, but you know, it was back and forth between them. You had Shane uh, get involved here uh, where uh, he was trying to... Uh, Hit Roman, but Roman ended up coming back and striking uh, Shane. And he had Drew McIntyre. He was going to hit the Claymore, but Roman moved out of the way. And then when McIntyre was going for the Claymore, he ended up back first on the announce table, which that, that was crazy to see. But of course, uh, you say uh, Roman and R-Truth win? What was that? Did Roman hit the spear? Yes, he did. Roman ends up picking up the win for him in our truth. Roman ended up pinning the spear to Elias. That was that. Roman Reigns and our truth win it. Then he had after the match, Roman ended up pinning another spear to Elias. Then our truth went for the pin. Our truth ends up again. The win to and he, then he re, he wins the twenty four seven championship back. <laughs> uh, 
Elias wins the 24-7 championship and loses it on the same night. Oh, fucking funny. I had to get a clap for that. Oh. So yeah, our truth wins the uh, 24/7 won the 24/7 championship back. So and that's how SmackDown ended. But yeah, this, this proves that this 24/7 ugly ass job or Ninja Turtle belt completely worthless. I'm just waiting for the day until they retire this fucking championship. Yeah, anyways, that's it for the uh, the SmackDown review. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Uh, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. And until next video, uh, which will possibly be a movie review of Godzilla, King of the Monsters. I may go and check it out tomorrow. We'll see. But if I do, there will be a uh, movie review on it. Uh, also, I'll give up my... Uh, little review on Stardust if you guys follow me on Stardust. If you don't, follow me on the Stardust app, Mikey Boy 101591. So so anyways, that's it for this video and till next video, if it will be the Godzilla King of the Monsters movie re review. I'll see you all later. Bye.